Welcome to Match Play TV. Today, continuing my series of great women in golf, I am with Ryan O'Toole from the LPGA Tour. Ryan, thanks so much for being with me today. We have so much to talk about. And I must say to everybody, Ryan has been so good about being on, on camera with us today because she just got back from Sydney, Australia, playing in the tournament down there for the LPGA Tour. And uh, that big, long trip and the, the, the layovers and the you're tired and it's uh, opposite seasons yeah. and opposite parts of the world and uh but thanks for uh, for being prompt and and getting right back to us and being on the show today we're going to have some fun together hey i appreciate that thanks for having me you know this is part of the series folks of growing the game of golf and great women in golf and ryan o'toole is certainly one of those great women in golf and they come from all walks of life uh, you've heard of many of them like maybe ryan o'toole and others Nancy Lopez and Cheyenne Woods and uh, Lorena Ochoa and Annika Sorenstam. But then there's so many that you haven't heard of. And we want to feature everybody as the fastest growing segment in golf. All right, Ryan, let's get right to it. You are a California girl. Yes. And I have seen so many pictures of you on skateboards and on uh, surfboards. And pretty much you said, I think, anything with a board I grew up loving to do. Oh. Tell me about growing up in Orange County, California. Uh, I grew up in a small beach uh, town, San Clemente. It's now growing. It's pretty big, but um, it's just there's nothing like it. I, you know, I travel all around the world, and there's still no place like home. Um, you know, you grew up in a place that you could walk barefoot anywhere, and yeah. kind of sometimes we did from the beach to straight into you know 7-Eleven to grab a soda and a candy when we were younger, or grab some Mexican food. It's like sand dusting off our feet and sure. bathing suits still on. So, you know, it's just um, I grew up in a place that people liked to vacation. And I think I'm very fortunate for that. So you grew up in a resort community kind of yes. as well, a destination. Yes. Just like here in Phoenix, Scottsdale, Arizona area, this is a resort destination for yeah. people coming in from all over the world due to the winter weather. Although you have perfect weather 13 months out of the year over there, right? Yeah, uh, yeah the 13th, I'm still trying to figure out where that is. <laughs> all right, so take me through some of the sports you played because you didn't start with golf. You did all no. sorts of things growing up. Okay, so yeah, when I picked up golf, I was just about 13. I went to a junior lesson with some family friends and fell in love with it. Uh, my parents don't play golf. I, um, I, before that, I was big into softball and basketball, so those are my two main sports. Yeah. And, um, and besides that, I was doing skateboard competitions, surf competitions for my junior high, um, karate a couple days a week. I was a brown belt with three black stripes. So, wow. Um, so golf, you were all over the board I was athletic. I all over the board. And when I came home and said, I want to play golf, I want to play golf, my mom was like, my, well, my parents were just like, uh, no. Like, I came home with something new every day. It was like, oh, unicycle. I want, to, I want to ride a unicycle or play guitar or play the piano or whatever. And um, they just, you know, it's a point they're like, okay, we're going to focus on this. But they I thought it was a passing fad. Which I have to say, none of them ever really were a passing fad. I just didn't have time. But were I you good at everything you did? That would be conceited if I said yes, right? But I, but you were. Uh, things, I think. I just think the athletic ability, like that, was where I strived. That's where, to me, it just I felt comfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents agreed that get, I had to get a 3.5 in in high school. That that was what they said. Anything below, we're taking things away. Um, so I was okay with that. Apparently, the head pro at the golf club where you were hitting balls or or trying to play a little bit called your dad one day and said, yes. you've really got to get her in to golf because she's very good at this. And that is when your dad changed his mind and you were hitting seven irons, 145 or 50 yards yeah. with a perfect draw on them. Mm -hmm. And people said, how long have you played? And you said, well, I just started. And they said, well, how could you do that? And you said, well, hey, I played softball and other sports where the ball is moving. This one, the ball stays right there. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Is that about right? That's about right. Little did I know it was not. E it's not easy. Uh huh. <laughs> so back then, you know, I wish I had that 13-year-old mind where it was just easy. Um, but yeah, head pro um, Rocky Rafkin, he called my house and uh, said, you know, you got to get her started. And at that point, I had been talking about it for the past week or so. And so they said, okay. They got me into lessons. They went, okay, wait a second. So we've done club softball, club basketball. We don't know 
um, like what is the avenue for golfers? Like what is there a club team? Is there teams? Is there tournaments? Like what is it? So they mm -hmm. dove into figuring out, okay, what's the next steps? Take me to high school playing golf along the high school years and then get me into UCLA where you are a sociology degree yeah. holder from UCLA. You're a social major. I'm a soci major. So get me, to, get me through high school to UCLA playing golf. All right. So I played high school golf. Um, I, when I tried out for freshman year, there was, there was eight of us. So no, excuse me, nine of us. So we couldn't field a, a varsity and a JV and a freshman team. We just had the two and we could barely field the two. And I played on a team with a lot of seniors. I um, had to play on the JV team. To be honest, when we did tryouts, I watched the senior girls miss putts. I saw them like give them to each other, not had their score right, and I had to sit on it and just watch. And no matter what I said, it didn't matter because we didn't have enough girls to fill. So I watched girls cheat their way to their freshman team or their senior team, and I sat and watched and played junior varsity team, which was fine. I mean, it was high school golf. When we come back with Ryan O'Toole, we're going to talk about her playing at UCLA and turning professional playing in the Solheim Cup. Stay with me. We'll be back with more match play right after these messages. Do you like Tour Edge? I love Tour Edge. This is seriously high tech. And they're long, right, Duff? Built in the USA? Oh, I love that. I need forgiveness. Did I mention these puppies are long? Really long. You know why I love Tour Edge? It's because I win with it. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Here's a great golf solution called Grip Drive. It's simple and easy to use, saving you money and keeping your grips in great condition. For chip shots into the green, snap it on your putter to keep that grip dry. Grip Drive fits in the back pocket for easy access. Use our powerful magnet to snap onto your golf cart so it's easy to take to the green. Grip Drive provides a convenient ball marker that is always with you. When your grips are dry and in great shape, you'll simply play better. match play with your host Ray Adams. All right we're back with Ryan O'Toole. Ryan get me to UCLA now from high school. You played on one of the most famous in one of the most famous schools in the country and of course you're a sociology major. Tell me about your college career at golf at UCLA. Um, so I went into UCLA. I knew I was a small fish in a big pond and I you know I had a few colleges that I looked at but I just felt like LA was a place I wanted to be. UCLA was a well-renowned school, and the team was good. Um, so I felt like I could learn a lot from uh, the players that were on it and the coach and, um, and, and kind of grow my game. So um, I started off pre-med at UCLA. I wanted a biomechanic or a kinesiology degree, and UCLA didn't offer either. So I, start, I was like, okay, let's try pre-med. Um, and after a year and a half, I was like, this isn't working. I was getting my butt kicked. So uh, trying to play golf, you know, and practice, you know, four to five hours a day 
and having school five hours a day and training every day, it didn't leave yeah. time for much study. So yeah. um, I went in and I said, okay, what do I have the most credits in? And it was, I didn't have the grade point average for communications. Um, you need like a 4-2 and at that point, I, if I had a 4-2, I would continue being, you know, in the direction I was. So, so you I, changed majors, became a social. Sociology would have been, and yeah. so I said, okay, great, let's finish with sociology. <laughs> All right, so you're coming down to the end of UCLA. Uh, you had some great finishes, some great tournaments in the NCAA there. Get me to 2009 when you decided, I'm going to be a professional golfer, and I want to be on the LPGA Tour. Take me through those moments and days in your thinking and transition. How does someone go from a college golfer to being a professional player? Um. I, well, I knew the moment I started playing golf that I wanted to be a professional golfer. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, there was no question. Um, I just knew that that was where I wanted to be. I knew before that I wanted to be a pro athlete. So what sport, I didn't know at the time. And then when I um, met golf, I knew that that was is it. Is that because you loved golf more than all the other sports? Or is it because you felt like you excelled at it more than all the other sports you were trying? I actually think it was harder for me than all the other sports. I really? Think, yeah, I think um, I just I fell in love with how hard it was. I fell in love with that it wasn't just physically demanding in the sense of the golf mechanics, the swing, um, but mentally it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Really? And I Why is it hard? Golf is just a mental sport. I mean, at the end of the day, it is. It, yes, there is that physical attribute, there is that skill level, but if you, um, I mean, you have to be in the right mind and it is so demanding and it's so quiet internally it's quiet and for someone like me that talks fast walks fast moves fast quiet is hard all right so you turned pro in 2009 and you made your attempts at the lpga qualifying schools yeah. the q schools so, how did that go for you well okay so i turned pro in 2009 i went and played 2008 ending we were able to play symmetric tour qualifying um, and so I did that, so that way I was able to play those events throughout the summer. Um, so I made it, so then I went to first stage Q school, so at the time I only had to have two based on because I had symmetric status, so, um, and I took six at first stage, and then between first and final stage I broke my hand. Um, you broke I, your hand? Yeah, I hit it How'd on you do it? tree roots, my shot didn't come up, so I strained the ligaments, broke a bone in here, so I had a cast on. Ooh. I took it off two weeks early to try to play, and I... I mean, I haven't had any repercussions since, but I just wasn't ready. So yeah. I went another year on Symmetric Tour and won a couple times and got my tour card. And then that kind of snowballed into, you know, where I am now. Well, you did. You had a great 2011 because yeah. it was the U.S. Open in 2011 that was a big, big boost to your career. Yeah, I think it was. A, Tell me about that U.S. Open. Um, well, it was my first U.S. Open I've ever played in. Uh, it was nice because I won the qualifier to it, so that was kind of momentum. I had won a, I went and played a Symmetric Tour event in a couple of them to start the year because I had no starts on the LPGA yet, being conditional status. So I won one of those in Mexico, um, and it just was, you know, I went out at the Open and it was, I mean, I've never felt nerves like that to be honest. I was so nervous and it was it was a crazy feeling. Is but, it because were you nervous, uh, Ryan, because it was a U.S. Open that you were trying to get in? Or were you nervous because this was going to be your first real big no, pro I, event? I was nervous at the U.S. Open. I wasn't nervous prior. It was at it. It was during it. It was oh, like, wow, okay. like, this is the big stage. I mean, to be honest, internally, yes, it was the big stage, but it wasn't anything that I thought it would ever be. Like, really? we grew up seeing these things on TV. We watch a lot of the men play. We've been to the men's events for the most part. I've been to some women's events, but, like, it was, you know, all these people come and watch. And I was like, this is the U.S. Open. There's a lot of people, but it still wasn't as... Like, I was like, wow. That really launched your playing career because you finished well at that 2011 yeah. U.S. Open. You did very, very well there. Yeah. It launched your career, and then you got a phone call, I believe it was that year, from a very special lady named Miss Jones. Yes. And what was that phone call about, and what happened? She called me and said... Um, Who was it? Rosie Jones. Rosie Jones yeah, from the LPGA from Tour. The, yeah, called and said... You know, I'm I great performance at the U.S. Open. Um, I'm very impressed. I want to let you know that you're on my radar um, for the Solheim Cup. And at the time, like, wow, I wasn't even on my radar. <laughs> like, I just was trying to get full LPJ status. I was just trying to get my foot in the door to be able to have starts and compete and, you know, and build my career. Yes. And 
all of a sudden this was thrown at me and I was ecstatic about it. I, of course I want to play for my country. I never get the opportunity to play for my country. Um, and so it came down to basically me fin finishing fifth at um, Pumpkin Ridge for the Safeway Classic. And I, and that was kind of her deciding factor. So you were trending at that point. Yeah. You were a hot, new, young player. You were trending at that point. And what happened was Rosie looked at that and said, I want somebody who's going to go to the Solheim Cup and help us win yeah. and beat the European ladies team. So you went to the Solheim Cup. That was in Northern Ireland, I believe, yeah. that year. And you did play in the Solheim Cup. And your record was, I believe, you scored three points for the U.S. team, yeah. which was, I think, second only to Morgan Pressel. Or maybe there was another player right in there. Tell me about the Solheim Cup and that experience. Uh, I mean, it was an awesome experience. To me, I felt more nerves at the Open. And I think maybe because I was by myself, where Solheim, you're with a team. You're playing for a team. Um, you know, there was a lot of pressure leading up to it. A lot of people that didn't agree with me being picked, even teammates on the team didn't mm -hmm. agree. And, you know, and I get it. You know, it came from something that wasn't on my radar to something that I realized I've been working my whole career for to play in this But event. you played well there and you and actually did exactly what Rosie wanted you to do. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the U.S. team lost that Solheim yeah. Cup to the European women. And when we come back with Ryan O'Toole, we're going to not only talk about some of the backlash that you did get after that Solheim Cup and how she handled it right here on Match Play. We'll be back with more Match Play right after these messages. Do you like Tour Edge? I love Tour Edge. This is seriously high tech. And they're long, right, Duff? Built in the USA? Oh, I love that. I need forgiveness. Did I mention these puppies are long? Really long. You know why I love Tour Edge? It's because I win with it. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Introducing the Putting Stroke Teacher Training Aid. The Putting Stroke Teacher helps the better player, the PGA Tour player, the, the pro that wants to get out on tour, because the first thing it's going to do is get these forearms lined up square and your shoulders lined up square. And that's the thing my dad and I worked on when I led the tour in putting, and it's the thing I'm constantly checking today to make sure that those are lined up, and that's going to really affect the path that the putter head swings on very easy to set up. You just take two pieces, stick them together, put it on the end of your putter, two little Velcro straps, and boom, you're in and you're ready to go. It's not big. It's very tiny. You can take it apart and stick it in your golf bag. Get the Putting Stroke Teacher and make more putts. Order the Putting Stroke Teacher today. And now back to Match Play with your host, Ray Adams. Welcome back to Match Play. And in this segment with Ryan O'Toole, we've got a lot more to cover. Let's get right to it. Ryan, you did get some backlash after uh, Rosie Jones picked you for the Solheim Cup. Now, you played well. You did everything you needed to do, scored three points. Why did you get backlash? What was the problem? I think after that, I started missing some cuts. I put a lot of pressure on myself, I think, due to a lot of people questioning my ability, my talent. Um, it started, I, I had to relearn to, I had to learn to block all that out, stuff that I wasn't used to having to block out or ever mm -hmm. used to having. So, um, I guess I nobody else in professional golf has ever missed a cut, right? Only you. Know, you. In my mind, you don't ever see those things, right? You don't <laughs> ever see the bad shots. You don't ever see the missed cuts. You only ever see the good that's portrayed on TV. Yeah. So you know, I, it was hard. It was hard to have people question my talent and, and, have, and, lose, and not have faith in me. So you know, even if it was down to team member or whatever, um, you know, I had to, I had to learn how to block it out. 
You said, uh, a quote from you, you said that you needed to grow mentally. Yes. And that was keeping you from the top of the leaderboards. Yeah. Tell me about the mental toughness that it takes to play tour golf and what about that was keeping you from being on top of the leaderboards? Uh, I mean, I can still say it is still keeping me from being on top. Why? Like, I just think it's, golf's hard in the sense that you know, uh, to forget the past shots, to not focus on the current shot and how much pressure you put on the current shot and letting go of, to be honest, it's letting go of control. It's, you know, golf something that you can't control outcome once you've hit it. You can't control what the next shot brings. Why is mental difficulty still tough for you? What is it about, what do you have to do or what are you working on that will help you get to that point of winning? I'm, re I'm really working on staying present in the moment that, you know, when I get over a putt, like, and I start feeling myself tense up, like rewriting that bad negative feel to a, okay, let's back away and step back in. So for the folks that are watching, the men and women that are watching Match Play TV today with, with Ryan O'Toole, can you just give them a quick moment uh, to, the, to the camera here as to what they can do as amateur recreational players, maybe when there's something on the line, little or big, or just for fun and bragging rights, how do they overcome that problem when they also struggle with it? I have to say, the biggest thing I've learned is how much backing off and like restarting or revisualizing what you want to see the shot or the feel the putt, like restart that. Um, for some reason, like if you can kind of like break yourself from that cycle that you're going into and like just, like I said, step away and revisualize what you want, it, it, it does help. And I feel like the more you do that, it becomes like this muscle memory kind of thing yeah. or this better habit that you're creating. And that's kind of what I've been really trying to dedicate and work and get better at. You said, and I'm quoting now uh, a few years ago, golf is a game. It does not define me. It isn't my life. Tell me about that. Um, I think, you know, back when that was said, uh, I was definitely, that was in the place that people were, uh, you know, questioning my ability. They were, you know, questioning my talent and all that. But at the same time, it's, you know, I'm a golfer, but I'm also an athlete. I am, you know, I love my family, I love my partner. I am very, I give all in everything I have. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, you're a golfer. Yeah, well, I still can think I can run faster than you and jump higher than you or anything like that. And to me, it's like, I, I try to be the best in everything I can be. Worst decision you've ever made in golf? Worst decision I've ever made yeah, in what golf? Would, what would you like to do over again? You know, I look back sometimes and I say, you know, growing a brand, like, I wish I could have been better at growing a brand because that seems to have gone a long way. The Ryan O'Toole brand. Yeah. And like had dived in a little bit more to that because you just create this little foundation, this little network. And it's like, sometimes it's like when you don't win, you kind of sitting there going, well, who am I? Or what, what have I done in the last 10 years? Like everyone always asks, oh, what have you won? And you have to answer uh, nothing. Well, you won three times on the Futures Tour, okay, but the Symmetra Tour, yes. and you've won other things. But the, the main big tour, they always, people want you to gotta say, win oh, how on many the events OPG have you tour. won? And yeah. I'm like, I hate that question, because I don't have an answer, all right? My answer is, not yet. So, I, and it's, I just think it's at that point, it's like, I'm not just a golfer, and like we've talked about, like, uh, you know, I came out on the tour wanting to be the most athletic girl on the tour. I wanted to make golf not just be your stereotypical golf look. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show that athletes do play golf. Yeah. And I think a lot of other athletes in other sports who have been great at their sport have come to golf and gone, wow, this is a really hard sport. Do you still believe that you are not defined by golf and that it is just a game and that there really is a life outside and away from the game? Oh, there is for sure a life. Like golf is definitely my, it's become a career. I mean, like anything really does. Yeah. Is it my passion? 100%. But has it become a career? Yes. And is there things that I love outside of it? Yes. And when the day that I'm ready to move on from golf, I think I'll be okay. So when does Ryan O'Toole win on the LPGA Tour? Because you've come close. I know. And you've been there. I think this year is that the That mental win. game. You I, think this is the year? Yeah. Everyone has always said this is the year, this is the year. And I've never actually said this is the year. I've worked my butt off this offseason. What, I mean, are, you? Not, what are you working on? I've never not worked, on? but it's just... Um, you know, I made some swing changes, some things that just will allow me to be a little more free out there, a little more like if, you know, timing tempos off because day to day changes, you know, you feel off and you wake up going, God, oh, this doesn't feel the same. And yeah. it's amazing when your senses are heightened and you're in that competitive realm, 
you feel everything. The Founders Cup is coming up yeah. uh, again. It's one of the most elite and prestigious tournaments all year long on the LPGA Tour Scores and has been for a low. number of years. You're going to be playing in the Founders Cup. Yes. And um, tell me about that golf tournament and which golf tournament of any of them out there would you really, really love to win? And you think you can? Well, you know, I'd love to win any of them. But, you know, I'd love to win this one because it's now my home. You know, any of the majors. Uh, you know, between those, those two being close to home, I, the U.S. Open, any of the majors, but the U.S. Open would always be, I just, I think any American will say the U.S. Open. And you've been there um, and you were close. Yeah. All right, tell me, let's get off the golf course for just a moment, and we're going to be finishing up here pretty quickly. What do you love? What are your passions? What do you do when you're away from golf and you really just dive in and you're the happiest? Whether it's that hour that I'm in the gym, or two hours or sometimes, or I'm out on a surfboard, or I'm out at the lake and I'm surfing behind the boat. Like... If, there's, if, if it involves a body of water or a board or being in the gym where I can get sweaty, I am happy. Ryan, do you have any special organizations, uh, maybe it's junior golf or any other organizations that are near and dear to your heart? Um, you know, I've, I've found that um, junior golfers, I, you know, being there to help them, to guide them, to answer their questions. You know, I get hit up on social media all the time by, you know, especially young female golfers. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I want to be there to talk about my path and to answer their questions and lead them in the proper, in the right direction. I've well, you're definitely a role model for that. And I know that the girls coming to golf and training and, and being taught about golf are coming in record numbers. Women in golf all over are, are just this explosive growth. To what do you attribute, or maybe even what advice do you have for women that want to get involved in golf or young girls that want to get involved in golf? And maybe they're a little reluctant or they're not sure about it. They might be a little bit fearful of it. What's your advice for them? Um, if you have a curiosity about it, if you have a passion about it, if it's calling to you, check it out. Dive in. See. I mean, it's... I, I can't tell you how many people later on in life want to discover golf, and sometimes it's too late. Or they go, man, you know, how many high school friends now go, I wish I would have done it then, because they're all getting into it, whether it's because with their husband or their boyfriend or their dad wants them to or whatever, that, um, you know... They're all like golf's the best thing because it is. Whether if you take it to be professional or it's social, I mean, it's used in careers all the time. Ryan O'Toole on Match Play with me today. Ryan, thank you so much for being with me. And you heard it right here breaking news, breaking predictions. Ryan O'Toole wins on the LPGA Tour this year. No pressure, right? No. Thanks for being with me on Match Play. <laughs>place where reality exceeds your dreams where time is not measured in days hours or minutes but in smiles new experiences and new friends a place where happiness is not a feeling it's a way of life here you're not just a visitor your family there are many languages in the world and our smile speaks them all